Miracy. Another big mistake that entrepreneurs make is that they make excuses not to do things and they make excuses to themselves. So they may say, well, I've been really busy today. I've worked hard. But at the end of the day, have you actually taken any client or revenue generating action? Or have you been working on things which actually aren't going to bring in more revenue? Are you a coach struggling to grow your business and achieve the success that you dream of? Do you ever wonder why some coaches seem to effortlessly attract clients and build thriving practices while others struggle to make ends meet? If so, then you won't want to miss this episode of Just Between Coaches. I'm Melinda Cohen, and I'll be your host for this podcast. I run a business called The Coaches Console, and we're proud to have helped tens of thousands of coaches create profitable and thriving businesses. On this podcast, we answer burning questions that newer coaches would love to ask a more experienced coach. Today, we're going to take a deep dive into the reasons why coaches often face challenges in growing their businesses and explore practical strategies for overcoming these obstacles. Joining me is a highly experienced coach who will share her expertise and experience for building a thriving coaching practice in today's competitive market. I've brought Nina Cook to the show today. Nina is a business accelerator coach for business owners who have internal blocks around growing their business. Her superpower is digging deep to find the root cause of why they're struggling and then showing them how they can clear out their resistance. She's an author of Renegade Mindset for Financial Advisors, and she's a fellow podcaster. Welcome, Nina. It's great to be here. I'm excited to have you on the show to talk about today's topic. I mean, I geek out on this topic, have been for 20 some years now. But before we get into it, would you mind just sharing a little bit of your background? Sure. I worked in corporate for many years, and then I left when I had children. I've been at home for around 10 years, you know, bringing up kids. And then I suddenly decided I wanted to do something for myself. And I started an online business. This was back in 2005. And the business was a personal shopping business. There weren't a lot of online personal shopping businesses around at that time. And as I was trying to grow it, I became very aware that I was hiding. (laughs) And I wasn't putting myself out there in a big way. I wasn't marketing myself. I was very, very reluctant to show my face on the website or even put my name on the website. And I happened to fall upon a really nice way of advertising for new clients, which meant I could stay hidden. And this way was doing Google clicks. So I started advertising and got a lot of Google clicks. I managed to get to the top of the first page for personal shopping. And I was anonymous, managing to get clients. And I realized quite quickly that if I had the confidence to put my name out there and start sharing content, I could have a much bigger business. But I was so scared of being seen that I held on to my resistance and it cost me very, very dearly. And it was at that moment I thought something has to change. I cannot carry on like this. And I decided I was going to do whatever it took to fix myself. At that time, I mistakenly thought that I was broken and there was something wrong with me. So I I started on a, a long journey of personal development, trying to find a way of permanently building my confidence and feeling authentic within myself. And after a lot of trial and errors and going to trainings, reading books, all of that stuff, I became very, very focused on finding a permanent solution. One day, a friend sent me an email and it led me to a guy who worked with limiting beliefs. And he said something really interesting to me on our first call. He said, the only reason you're feeling this lack of confidence is because you believe these beliefs about yourself. And we identified the beliefs I had, which were, you know, deep self-esteem beliefs like I'm a failure. There's something wrong with me. uh, I'm not good enough. I'm flawed. And he started helping me to dissolve these beliefs. I wasn't really noticing anything. And then after um, a few sessions, I decided to create a video for my business. And this was really a, a big step forward because 
every time I thought of putting myself out there, I'd always found a good excuse not to do it. But this time when I decided to create a video, I went ahead and did it. And there wasn't that wall of resistance. I didn't care about the reception to my video. I wasn't worried about people criticizing me or giving, getting any negative feedback. I was just happy to put it out there. And that's when I realized there's something that's fundamentally shifted within me about my perception of myself and about my identity. My business really started flourishing in a big way because I was able to market myself effectively for the first time. And I thought, okay, if I can make this work for me, and I always thought that nothing will ever work for me, then I can help entrepreneurs to get out of their own way and see how far they can go with their business. Now, I can relate to so many things that you just talked about, especially that staying hidden. The word that I used for myself for many years was just being invisible. I became very comfortable being invisible. For the longest time, I thought it was just because I was an introvert. That's just how it was. And then I realized, no, it's not just being an introvert. There was something different about that. And for me, it was the perfectionism that helped me to hold on to my resistance. I would, as long as I could do whatever I was doing and make sure I looked good doing it, that's the lane I would stay in. If there was ever any uncertainty, I just didn't do it because I didn't know if I would look good doing it or if people would criticize me or if I'd get into trouble because I actually put myself out there. So, uh, And this was true not just in my business. Uh, I'm a big skier. And this was true on the ski slopes. I only went on the slopes that I knew I could get down without falling or crashing or looking horrible or losing control. And uh, so it was it was really kind of impacting all the areas of my life. And, and like you, just hitting that moment of like something's got to be different. Like I can't keep doing this. I can't keep hiding behind it. And that was when I started being visible. And I often wonder if for entrepreneurs, the vast majority of us are introverts, or maybe not. It seems like the vast majority of the people in the circles I'm in are introverts. And so many entrepreneurs use that as a way to be an obstacle or to stay hidden or to stay in the background. But I actually find it's one of our greatest superpowers in our business. What has been your experience with being an introvert? Do these go hand in hand? Does it make the challenges bigger or different or is it nothing really? It's just a, a whole different topic, maybe an even a different conversation. Yeah, it's so interesting. We do label ourselves. I label myself as, as you said, being invisible. For me, it was safe to be invisible. And I thought this is something that I can do for the rest of my life, but it'll be okay. But it actually wasn't okay. Being an introvert is so is such an interesting thing because being an introvert doesn't mean that you can't be successful in your business. Being an extrovert doesn't mean that you have to be successful being in business. It really comes down to what you believe is true about you and what limitations you put on yourself. I did a survey to my email list and I asked them, what is the biggest challenge that is stopping you from growing your business? And I expected the top answer to be something around money blocks. The top answer was the fear of putting themselves out there, mm -hmm. of marketing themselves. Most entrepreneurs know that the way to get clients is to have conversations. And the quickest way to have a conversation is to do regular outreach. But the outreach part seems to be really, really difficult for so many of them because that's making yourself vulnerable when you're reaching out to someone and inviting them to buy your product or have a conversation with you, you know, you're telling them about a launch or emailing your list or going on social media, whatever that outreach is, it feels like you're, you're putting yourself out there to be rejected. And that can be a big enough reason for many, many entrepreneurs to not do the outreach. But then that means they're not going to have the business they want to have. I like to get to the core of issues, and this seems to be one of the core pieces that stops so many entrepreneurs having the business they want to have. Yeah, I would, I would agree with that. And what I have seen is when they don't get to the core issue, but there's this underlying fear of putting themselves out there, like you said, they don't want to be rejected or all the other different ways we could describe it. What ends up happening is they try one marketing approach that somebody shared with them that was successful for them. And then they try it for a little bit and they're like, oh, this doesn't work. That's not for me. And then they'll go try another one or they'll take this training program and 
then they still haven't resolved the core issue. So then they'll take another training program and they're in this perpetual learning mode or kind of scattering themselves with all these different marketing strategies and tactics, but not sticking with one long enough or really understanding any of them to great degrees, because once they do, then they're putting themselves out there. So it's, there's, there's this little interesting thing that happens where they're doing just enough work, training, learning, strategy to say I'm doing it, but not really addressing that core issue. Absolutely. This reminds me of one of my clients. She got to the stage where, you know, she had to do the outreach, tell her network about her transition into, you know, a different type of uh, market. And she was really resisting doing the outreach. And we were working on her limiting beliefs, which were, you know, rejection is scary. Um, It's not safe to be visible. Uh, You know, so we're working through these together. And she happened to talk um, to her garbage man about what I'd asked her to do to start doing the outreach. And he said to her, oh, so all your coach is asking you to do is to write a couple of sentences to a few people. Is that right? And she said, "Uh, yeah, that's all I'm doing, just writing a couple of sentences to a few people. And she came back on the next call and she said, well, all you're asking me to do is write a couple of sentences to a few people. There's nothing scary about that, is there? And I said, no. (laughs) <laughs> That's nice and perspective. Got, and got the garbage <laughs> man spoke to you about that and really, you know, cut it down to what it is. And this is the thing. That's all we're doing. But what we do is that we create all these meanings about a very simple action. Oh, um, they're going to reject me. It's not safe. And no one's going to want what I have. And then no one's going to pay me that much money. So we load this very simple action with all of these meanings and drama and stories. And so that action becomes such a difficult thing to do. But the trick is to remove all of these made up meanings, which don't come from the action, they come from our head, and just remove all of those. So you just get back to that one action step. It has no meaning attached to it. You just do it and do it multiple times a day. (laughs) And by the end of the week and by the end of the month, you probably set up a good number of conversations. A couple of them are probably going to convert into clients. And that's really all there is to it. We're looking for clarity and simplicity in our lives. And that is how we simplify our lives. It's so interesting that you even bring this into the conversation. My husband and I, we just celebrated 15 year anniversary and we went away for a few days and we're out walking, we're in the mountains and we're walking and just strolling through nature. And we just start talking about our beliefs growing up about money. It was just very simple conversations. We weren't going that deep or weren't going for transformation or anything like that. It was just this, you know, what were your beliefs growing up? And we'd had these conversations before, but for some reason it was coming up again. It's like, well, here's what we grew up with. Here's what we learned and discovered. And so it served us at one point. And then we just have to remember to ask ourselves, does it still serve us? Do we want it to still serve us or what needs to serve us now? And remember that we're the boss of ourselves and we get to change that for what it is that we want. We just sometimes forget to do that and we're blindly moving forward. Meanwhile, stuck in the old stories of the fear of putting ourselves out there because we're assigning all of those meanings to it based on our past. What are some of the common mistakes that coaches make uh, when they're trying to grow their business? One of the biggest mistakes is well, not having a plan, not having a sturdy plan that's been proven, trying out strategies that, that, that don't suit their personalities and that they don't like doing. So I learned this through trial and error. I would jump on different strategies that worked for other coaches. I'd hire a coach, try and implement their strategy, hate the strategy. For example, I worked with a coach and I paid her a lot of money and she built very complex funnels with lots of webinars and emails and PDFs and all sorts of things. I hated the whole formula. And I thought, well, that's not for me. So I abandoned that. And I thought at the end of all of, you know, trying these different things out, what do I really enjoy doing? What sort of strategies do I like doing that I will consistently do? Because that's the key, isn't it? Find a marketing strategy you like, which you're likely to carry on doing because you enjoy doing it. For me, I love speaking. I like being on videos. I like uh, sharing content. So my marketing strategy is sharing content. And if I can speak rather than write, then I'll choose speaking anytime. So podcast guesting is one of my 
favorite ways to spread my message. So I think that is one of the key things. Find a strategy that you enjoy doing that plays to your strength. Stick to it and be consistent. Another big mistake that entrepreneurs make is that they make excuses not to do things and they make excuses to themselves. So they may say, well, I've been really busy today. I've worked hard. But at the end of the day, have you actually taken any client or revenue generating action? Or have you been working on things which actually aren't going to bring in more revenue? And if you were to focus even an hour a day on actual client revenue generating activity, which could be sending emails out to people or prospects or sending an offer out, then at the end of your working day, you will have that glow of satisfaction that I did some outreach. So the excuses are a key part of what I see is one of the the big mistakes that entrepreneurs make. I spoke to a financial advisor and he said that I'm 30 years behind where I want to be. And I thought, that's really sad that you feel that because he was looking to exit his business at that point. And he felt he had not achieved anything near what he could have done if he'd really followed, you know, a good strategy and implemented it. And for him, it was lack of belief in himself and staying in his comfort zone, but he had deep, deep regrets about it. So this is what it is. You can make change now in this moment. Dare to think differently and play this game and play to win, but be okay with failures along the way because you will have so much fun expanding your comfort zone, stretching it. And the thing is, the sky is not going to fall in. You will not die as a result of taking risks in your business, but this is how you're going to find out how much courage you have, how resilient you are, how strong you are. And it's only by doing something different to what you're doing now. I love that dare to think differently. And I had a girlfriend mentor of mine as well talking about the excuses and the reasons that people give. She's like, there's really only one legitimate excuse or reason. And that's, I don't know how. Everything else is just a very, you know, it's a fabrication, very clever sometimes. And you were talking about, you know, be okay with failures along the way, right? You either win or learn. When we're trying to stay focused and motivated, like that can be hard when we're faced with challenges and setbacks or those perceived failures if we haven't quite adjusted our perspective. What are some of the ways that coaches and entrepreneurs can stay motivated to continue to move forward and not retreating or slipping back? Yeah, this is a really good one. It's going back to what I said earlier, is stripping away all our made up meanings about the so-called failure. So say um, someone sends an offer to their email list and no one takes them up on that offer. Then rather than making up meanings about, you know, what this means about me, oh, that means that no one wants my stuff. I'm never going to make it work. I'm never going to make enough money. Um, my list doesn't like me. Instead of making up all those meanings, really intentionally think, okay, this doesn't mean anything, but what lessons can I learn from this? How can I do this differently? How can I improve it? Who could help me to improve it? Is this something that I enjoy doing or isn't this playing to my strengths? I spoke to um, a client today and she said that she has only ever tried one webinar in her life. And the webinar that she ran, for some reason, Zoom blew out in the middle of the webinar. And she said, Zoom has never, ever let me down before, but it let me down in that webinar. All the tech completely went. I was humiliated. And she said, so I'm never going to try a webinar again. And I said, so what you're saying is that all that happened is um, Zoom didn't work in your webinar. She said, no. And I said, okay, that's all that happened. And she went, okay, that's all that happened. And I said, well, you could run another webinar and you know, and Zoom will probably carry on working in that webinar and you, you would be fine. So it was the fear of it ever happening again. So taking her history, applying that one event and then making that decision, I can never run a webinar again because I may be humiliated. So this is how we use stories very unwisely in our business and they stop us from growing our revenue. So it's really stripping all those stories away and looking at the actual fact and saying, well, that's not actually a big deal. I can get around this. I can learn how to do this better. So that's how I 
rebound from failures. And actually, the solution are normally very, very simple and straightforward because we're using resourceful, creative thinking when we're not in drama mode. And that's how we solve problems much more quickly. I love that. That's one of the things that I do as well, that do differently. I am so quick to say, okay, what went well? What didn't go like I thought it was going to? And what can I do differently? And the faster I can get to those three questions, the less opportunity my brain has to apply meaning. And, but I really like that you actually stop and say, this doesn't mean anything. When it comes to our business, I mean, there's a lot that goes on in your business. So many different aspects behind the scenes to our business. And uh, it doesn't matter if you're brand new or you've been doing this for 20 years. There's just a lot that goes on with the business so we can do what we do. How do you prioritize which areas to focus on when creating a growth plan with your clients? Outreach. <laughs> yep. It always comes back to outreach. What is the shortest route to a conversation? So for me, I try and practice what I preach. I, I, I do lots of LinkedIn activity. I connect with people that I want to um, either write to my podcast or I'd like to podcast guest on. I like doing um, bomb bomb videos to ex-clients and prospects to catch up with them and see what's going on. And with clients, that's what I encourage them to do. I love that. Now, there are so many different ways we could continue with this conversation. And I have a feeling you and I could talk for days about this topic. Are there any other questions I should ask you or any other things that you want to bring to our listeners? If there's one mindset strategy that I could pass on to your listeners, it would be this, to remove meanings from all events, whether they're past events or whether they're events that haven't happened yet, things that people are dreading in the future. And to say this one sentence to remove meanings from events, so you're looking at the event in a very clean, clear way, and that will help you to make the best decision. Is to say this one sentence, whenever you get a negative loop of thinking, become aware of it and say to yourself, that doesn't mean what I imagine it means. And that will tell your conscious mind that you're making up a story in that moment. And once you tell yourself you're making up a story, then you can no longer keep buying into that story. And that will give you temporary, clear mind. And then the story or another story will start up and just say the same thing again. It doesn't mean what I imagine it means. I am just making all of this stuff up. Keep doing it. And if you were to do it every time you have a negative thought every day, then your business is going to grow because you're going to be a clear thinker, rational thinker, and you're going to start thinking differently. Beautiful. So let's summarize a few of the things that we talked about today. You took us right inside with your own story. You took us inside of that scared of being seen and that resistance that so many entrepreneurs have, being invisible, staying hidden, all of those different ways of looking at it and about deciding to do whatever it takes to fix ourselves. I mean, not even fix ourselves, but really just change our thinking uh, and having that shift about ourself and our identity. We got into the conversation about how does introvert play into this or not, or extrovert for that matter. And uh, we really dug into what you believe to be true about yourself and the limitations that we put on ourselves and how this is the top challenge that really holds entrepreneurs and coaches back. It's really about the fear of putting ourselves out there. And, and if we don't address that root or core issue, we're just gonna get into that perpetual learning or that constant being busy for the sake of being busy so we can say we're, we're moving towards it, but never actually really getting there, but really addressing the core and root issue. We got into the topic of outreach and conversations and uh, really looking at the meanings that we put on all of that. Uh, the stories that we attach to it, the drama that we give it. And the trick is to remove all the made up meetings and just find what's the one action step that I can get to. I love how you said this, the shortest route to a conversation. Every day, ask that question, what's the shortest route to a conversation? And be consistent with that. We talked about the different mistakes uh, that people make and how do we get to the do differentlies? Um, how do we look at the lessons that we can learn from this and reminding ourselves that it doesn't mean anything? And that one mindset strategy that you left us with, that sentence that we can say whenever any negative thinking comes up, 
that doesn't mean what I imagine it means. Such a beautiful, powerful thing to equip ourselves with. Nina, do you have any other parting words for our listeners? Just for everyone to know that they have everything they need to have all the success they want. They just need to get out of their own way. Very true. Thank you for listening to this episode of Just Between Coaches and also a giant thank you to Nina Cook for this incredible conversation. You can find out more about her at ninacook.co.uk. That's Nina, N-I-N-A, Cook, C-O-O-K-E, dot C-O dot U-K. And she's got a free resource, the Earn More Work Less Quiz. You'll find a link for that in our show notes. Nina, thank you so much for coming to the show. Thank you, Melinda. I'm Melinda Cohen, and you've been listening to Just Between Coaches. Just Between Coaches is part of the Mayor CFM podcast network, which also includes such shows as Blowing Up and To Lead Us Human. Mishi Lamb's produced this episode. I wrote this episode together with her. Cynthia Lamb is our supervising producer, and Danny Innie is our executive producer. Post-production was by Post Office Sound. If you want to listen to upcoming and previous great episodes on Just Between Coaches, please follow us on Spotify, on Apple Podcasts, or wherever you might be listening right now. And if you like the show, please leave us a starred review. It's the best way to help us get these ideas to more and more people. Thank you and see you next time.